Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Into the Pit. And all the way from the UK, I'm privileged to have Miss Nina Roberts here. And she has abilities, but we're going to learn about her and have a great conversation. So, Nina, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Nina Roberts. I'm from near the city of Lincoln in England. I've been working with the spirit world since I was about 16, knowingly. Um, it started a lot earlier than that. Um, on my 16th birthday, I was randomly given two packs of tarot cards. Mm -hmm. So as any normal, rebellious 16-year-old does, I went down the pub and started doing readings for a pint and had a great time. But prior to that, the start of my story really was when I was 13 and my mum's piano started playing on its own, which was absolutely terrifying. Um, I won't go into it because it's a while, but it was scary. And I ran out of the house with the dog. <laughs> but luckily for me, I had an aunt who was a medium. Now, she was a medium when it was illegal to be a medium in the UK um, under the Witchcraft Act. Those who have heard of Helen Duncan, who was a trans medium, um, she got thrown into prison for doing her mediumship. My aunt was working during those times. Her daughter was a healer. And those of you who know anything about healing may have heard of Harry Edwards. They call the uh, grandfather of modern day spiritual healing. And that's who my aunt and second cousin, I guess, uh, work with. But they knew from when I was born um, what my destiny was. I didn't. So all along they were teaching me without my knowing. So when this piano played and I ran, fortunately, my mum phoned them. And my aunt just said, I'll get Spirit to leave her alone until she's 16. I do believe they might have had a conversation with my mum about this before, you know, I knew. So 16th birthday, got these tar tarot cards, went down the pub. Could only do three or four readings because then I'd be drunk. So, <laughs> but they were young days. I didn't know what I was doing. Now, I, 17, 18, I found the spiritual, what well, we have spiritualist churches here. So I started going to the spiritualist church because at the time, that was the only place in this country you could go to get messages from what we'd call experienced, qualified, um, trusted mediums, okay? And in our term terminology, a medium gives messages of proof of life after life. Um, as opposed to psychically reading other people's energies, but spirit work with that as well. That's just a technical bit. So I start going to these spiritualist churches. Um, when I turned 18, or a week after my 18th birthday, my father died. And obviously heartbreaking time. But I was curious as to where he'd gone, because I knew he hadn't gone, but he'd gone. So though I'd been working with spirit a few years, I still didn't quite get it. So I carried on going to spiritualist churches and occasionally, if I hadn't even off, went to an open circle. And then I had my first daughter when I was just before I was 20. And I had my fiance, which I wasn't my daughter's dad. My daughter's dad did a runner, best thing he ever did. But my fiance then, um, he proposed to me and a week later I read in the local newspaper he'd been killed in a motorbike accident. Oh my gosh. So again, spirit were there i knew all this there was a lot more happened as well but that's the outline so i kept going to these spiritualist churches and i was in these development circles giving messages but i really didn't understand what i was doing so i went on had more relationships had more children so by the time i was 27 i'd been in a violent relationship my partner had died my daughter's dad had cleared off a bit of a nightmare and I was at a sink or swim stage. So at that point, I'd been doing readings because my friends gone, oh, just charge a bit for your readings, you're good. I still didn't really know what I was doing. So about 27, 28, had my three children. My youngest one was autistic as well. And I decided to go to college, start studying counselling and psychology because I love psychology. I love people's minds and how they work and how they tick. Little did I know what spirit had in store later. So from then, I must get on for 30, I was going to 
by that time they'd opened a spiritual centre in the town, which was a non-religious based centre, because I do not do religion. What you believe is between you and your God. Right. That's your business. I don't inflict my beliefs on anyone, and I do not accept them inflicted on me. So I went to the spiritual centre, and I learned a lot more about energy and auras and chakras and past lives and loads of stuff. And then one day I saw this advert in a magazine for a spiritual retreat called Hafni Kowed, and I knew I had to go. Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, at that stage, it was probably in my mid to late 20s, I'd become quite big-headed with my abilities. I thought I was something special. Well, I got to this place in Wales, this Hafni Kowed, and spirit basically pulled the rug from under my feet and went, now, now you learn. <laughs> so <laughs> I ended up going there for quite a few years on and off. And I learned so much about spirit, about energy. At the same time, I'd been studying counselling and psychology, had an autistic son, and I learnt, um, well, on the mediumistic side and working with spirit, learning about different energies, different elements. So I got into spirit rescue work, which is um, helping spirits to pass over, even if they don't want to. So I ended up doing that. I didn't intend to do it, it just sort of happened. Um, Because over here on November the 11th, we have Remembrance Sunday for those who died in conflict. And I'd always respected people who give their lives in service. It's one of the things I'm very um, proud to do and I respect. So I'd gone to this service on my own, coming back in my car, and I'm feeling this car's a little crowded. And there was a platoon of soldiers in this car with me. And I'm like, okay, I'm going crackers. <laughs> so I just say, okay, what is going on? Talk to me. And they said, well, we knew you, we felt your energy at the cenotaph, the memorial, and we want your help. I won't go into town, but I help them all pass on to the spirit world. Okay. And after that, I kept getting these groups of soldiers turning up, going, can you help us move on? <laughs> and I must have been doing that for a year or two and I lived near Coventry for those who know England it was really badly bombed in the Blitz it was absolutely devastated so was Birmingham that was up the road so where I lived was an industrial area that had been really badly bombed so there was a lot of energy there of people who'd passed suddenly who'd had a lot of trauma there was a lot going on and I learned a lot about energy and trauma, not just those who were living, but those who passed. And I discovered through my rescue work that you need to counsel spirits who've passed the same way you would someone who was alive. And as I was developing, I found there's no difference between the dead and the living. It's just we've got a body and they haven't. They still feel what they feel. Um, They still have the pain, anger, anguish, all the emotions we have. The only difference I found is I had this described to me lovely. We're down here looking down the road where we're going and that's all we can see. Spirit are up there as though they're in a helicopter looking down on us so they get a bigger view of where our life's going. So when spirit are passing messages on and giving their opinion, because it is their opinion, it's because they can see a clearer view of our life path than we can, okay? Well, I always say when I do private one-to-one readings if you didn't take their advice when they're alive why would you take it now they're dead because they don't actually change personalities very much right they, they might see more so i did the rescue work and then because of all the earlier trauma in my life i got to a phase of self-development which was about finding out who i am why am i here what's my purpose as well as getting rid of a lot of emotional baggage that I picked up over many, many life experiences. So that was my next phase of development, if you like. Um, As I got to the end of that phase of development, I moved away from where I live near Coventry up to near the city of Lincoln with my children who are now all teenage years at this point. So we just needed a new start, a fresh start, and it was the right thing to do. Unfortunately, where I moved to 
um, was a quite a rough area. Little did I know, Spirit had plans for me, which was basically, um, I had to cleanse this area that was quite violent. There'd been a lot of murders, a lot of drug problems, alcohol, social problems. My job was to clear the area of a lot of the energies that were left there. And for those of you who know about ley lines, the energy lines, in the area where I moved to, they'd moved a church, very old church, from down into the town centre up to where this area was. Now, most churches or ancient places of worship, such as stone circles, are all joined up with ley lines. So those energy lines flow wherever. The Native Americans knew about this and the energy lines and where to bury people and where to build houses and Knights Templar knew what to do with it as well. So that ancient knowledge was coming back. And I had to somehow link this church with the cathedral so it could go back into the grid because it was off the grid, it was affecting the energies of the area. That's the simplest explanation I can give. It took a few years to do, it's not something we do overnight. Um, but while I was in that area, a neighbor had this room in her house, which nobody would go in. There was such a dark energy, because obviously paranormal investigation, when you work with spirit, you're gonna be coming across spirits and energies and entities that aren't nice. And there was another medium on you in the town and she had similar experience to me, paranormal investigation, spirit rescue. So we went to this room where neither of us would actually step foot in this room. It was like there was a force field at the door. It was horrendous. So we thought, we'll come, we thought we'll go away, we'll have a chat and we'll come back. So we went away and we said, okay, what are we going to do? Because this isn't something either of us have come across before. It was a real dark, nasty entity. So working with our spirit guides, um, we found out somebody had been doing some very dark magic and dark things in that room. And they'd, if you want, created their own demon. And because it terrified them, they moved out of the house, left it, whoever came next. And people never lived in that house long. It was four doors from where I was living. I'm like, you spirit, you know what you're doing. So we finally found the key or keys to remove that energy from that house with a lot of prayers and a lot of help from the spirit world. But this is the interesting bit. You know, I said earlier, I'd rescued all those soldiers. Mm -hmm. One of them had come back to me and said, because you've helped us so much and you continue to help us. If ever you are in trouble, call upon us. Oh, wow. And the army will come and help you. Right? Wow. So to get rid of this demon thing, the army came and got rid of it. I don't know what they did with it. And I don't want to know. The wow. army come and got rid of it. It was amazing. That's and I've incredible. got to say that. They'll only come in when it's serious. They won't come for anything trivial. If it's serious, they come and help. And it's lovely having that. Yeah. I've got the back of the British Army. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> How many people can say that, right? <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, they're all in spirit, but never <laughs> mind. <laughs> so that was somewhere moved on. But from there, with my self development and self worth, because when people develop their mediumistic abilities, they practice on that communication with the spirit worlds and other energies and other entities. They forget to look inwards and sort yourself out. Because mm. self-healing brings self-love, brings self-worth. Okay. And as I see it, if you're a channel with spirit, all that negative energy, anger, hurt, pain, is blocking that channel to connect with the universal energies and the earth energies. Yeah. So right. what's your best thing to do? clear the pipes, clear those energies, which is all that self-healing, self-awareness, self-worth. Mm -hmm. okay. So then that also came back to the counseling training I did when I was younger. Everything came together. So those of you who've read the Celestine prophecies, prophecies, prophecies will know and understand about there's no such thing as synchronicity. Everything mm. happens for a reason. So by the time I was doing this rescue work and living in Lincoln, I just, I was 
comfortable with the synchronicity of events. And as soon as I started to let go of trying to control my life, I had to make, what's it, had to make God laugh, make plans. So once I let go, um, the events and the synchronicity came up more and more and more. And I ended up going on a Louise L. Hay Heal Your Life workshop um, up in Scotland, which was absolutely amazing. So I came back a different person. Something had lifted. So from there, I mean, I've lost count of how many readings I've done over the years. I really couldn't even begin to tell you. Wow. Um, parties, individuals, the spirit rescue work where you go to houses, factories, businesses and clear the energies. Um, the earth healing was the thing that I found really fascinating when I was doing it. Um, it's to help heal the ley lines in the energy flow of the earth. Um, you find, I'm sure those who know about this stuff, is where you get call a black stream where the energy is flowing the wrong way or it's been blocked, mm. for whatever reason. You often get those on crossroads where there's accidents or even when there's not crossroads, an accident black spot is often because there's a black stream there and the energy isn't working right. Um, I actually experienced one when I was coming in Lincoln because Lincoln's on a hill, for those who know it. And I was driving down the hill and this is something else that happened. It was a time slip. I was driving down the hill and I was going to stop at the junction at the bottom of the hill. The view in front of me changed. There was no longer a road there. The road had gone, the buildings are gone. There was just a big mansion house. Whoa. Split second. So I put my brakes on, but I'd gone into the middle of the road and it was on a bend, so you couldn't, and I hit another car, unfortunately. But it did end up quite funny because well, not for the person in the car, say. <laughs> nobody got hurt. But I hit this car and their car spun around and hit the window of a bank and smashed the bank window. So the police come along, obviously. Obviously, breathalysers both do all the regular things they do. Right. And what about the bank? And the police officer went, oh, the bank's got enough money, they saw their own window out. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, that was amusing. But the scene actually changed. Now, from that accident, I had to go on this um, driver awareness courses. Yeah. Okay. But with that, you have to go through what we call the Crown Prosecution Service. And I ended up chatting to the, the chap who worked there and I explained to him, I said, this scene changed. And he went, do you know how many times I hear that with accidents? That they don't normally drive that route. The scene changes. Now, this goes back to when my fiancé was killed. He was on his motorbike following his parents. Mm -hmm. His dad braked to miss a cyclist, but they could, and it was a country lane. But once that, he came off and got hit by another car. But nobody saw that cyclist apart from his dad. Oh, wow. No one. And he would never let me read for him. And he always said he died when he was 21. He once had a reading at a seaside resort. He would not tell anybody what was said in that reading. Hmm. Which I just find pretty amazing. Um, but he still comes through regularly. <laughs> so where have I got to? I'm doing the earth healing, put the LA lines, energies and doing all that. But then I'm finding people. This is recent years with people and how people affect your energies. Oh, yeah. So they come in, they drain you. They buzz up. Anyway, I had somebody who I thought was a really, really good friend, and I totally trusted her. Excuse my language, but I found out she was a two faced bitch. Oh, no. She only wanted to be friends with me for what I could do. And I'd had a few of these over the years, and I kept getting rid of them, but they kept coming back. And I seemed to have a knack for attracting narcissists, which was quite good fun as well. And this one, I was absolutely stunned because I was starting to run workshops and teach other people. And she was going around telling everybody I was actually evil and she was trying to stop me being evil. And I just thought, I can't. and it turned out I was scared to tell her I didn't want to work with her anymore. You should never be scared to tell anybody anything. Right. So I went away and it was um, another course, a little weekend workshop thing. And it was supposed to be about mindfulness, you know, mindful meditation. Right. 
and I thought, well, this will be good. This will recharge my batteries. This will get me refocused. So one of the ladies on the, was running the workshop was lovely. The other one was absolutely awful. So it was on about being kind to yourself. The normal things, be kind, breathe deeply, think. Well, the second lady decided after lunch, so we'd all had a big lunch, dinner, what you call it like, and she decided to do a meditation about food and when you eat food, right? After what? a big lunch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and... She went, imagine again, I swallowed it. Then imagine it going down your throat into your stomach and then through your digestive tract and out the other end. Oh my gosh. I thought I've heard it all. <laughs> I have never up. heard anything so horrendous in my life. Now, I don't <laughs> hold back with opinions nowadays. So she went around and asked what we thought. And I said, it's the most disgusting, vile meditation I have ever heard of. And what was she thinking? Right. She could have had all of us thrown up in the room. It was that bad. Well, after that, she took an instant dislike to me. And on the introduction, I said I was a medium, I do readings. So people kept asking me for readings. I said, I'll do them in the evening and weekends. You know, I'll do it in the evening after the course or lunch. Obviously, I'm not doing it during the course. Mm -hmm. um, whereas there's a little bar in the area and I was sitting there, you know, people talking, getting to know each other. I heard racism, sexism, homophobia, you name nasty opinions and I heard them. Okay. Then this person found out a day or two later that I'd been doing readings for people mm -hmm. and took me to office and said, You can't do that. It's against our regulations, our contract. Well, you I said, I'm not promoting myself. I never offered to a reading, people ask me. I'm not taking any money and I'm doing it in my time. Well, you can't. It's against regulations. I went, Okay, they show me the policy. Mm -hmm. couldn't because there wasn't one I was that angry I left and said oh could you leave quietly and not tell the group I thought not in your Nelly <laughs> <laughs> so I walked into the room full of the people of course I went I'm leaving because of the discrimination I'm having to put with here you know the religious discrimination for practicing my beliefs um, blah blah and right. apparently um, after I left I stayed in touch with some people from the course and they said that one tutor got an absolute hammering off everyone on that course because they treated me so appallingly. But I came back early and I spoke to my friend and he went, honestly, Henry, it could only happen to you. He says, you should write a book. So I did. Oh, wow. It's called, It's Not All Love and Light. <laughs> because I had a catalogue of these experiences. Okay. Mm -hmm. Funny thing about the book was I'm dyslexic. Not right. Well, I can, but yes, Ben is calling. And Spirit just said, trust us, we'll get this book written. So they'd wake me up at two in the morning. I'd get on my computer. I'd type away for an hour and I'd go back to sleep. And it took about two, three years to get this book together. And finally got it together. Just give it to some people to read, rewrite it. Blah. And then I think, well, who's going to publish it? Because you got to self-publish when you first start out because none of us are J.K. Rowling. Right. Um, and I went to a, we have psychic fairs here, Mind, Body, Spirit events. I went, there's a lady there and she just said, oh, I've been, this friend of mine's got their book published with these people. She went, I feel you need to know who they are. So everything fell into place and it got printed and that was that. So... But that was the, the self-awareness. But the strange thing with this book is Spirit said it will take years to take off. Right, but it'll get where it's going. So me toppling on my life, going around the different churches and centres, doing mediumship demonstrations and what have you. And one church I went to, there was two ladies in the audience. One I knew vaguely, the other I'd never met before. They both bought my book that day. Oh. Both of them were going to give up working with spirit because of the experiences they had. They both mm -hmm. read the book and neither of them gave up working with spirit. They carried on their path. And I've wow. heard it time and time again. One of them became a really, really good friend. Um, she's more of a witch. She doesn't read tea leaves and palmistry. She's brilliant at it. So it's just, that no such thing as coincidence, everything happens for a reason. So, so more up to date, lockdown happened. 
I started doing online mediumship on StreamYard, but we got fed up with the hackers. So we moved on to Zoom. And for two years now, I've been doing mediumship online. Also ran a centre where I live in the village. Um, we have different mediums come and things like that. But the other thing I love to do now is teach. I like to teach people about their energy, their potential and their abilities. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. I've had this thing where I went, I want to teach enough people to do their abilities and their jobs so I can have some time off. <laughs> I've been doing this since I'm 16. I'm in my early 50s. You know, in that time, I've had about, I could say, six months break from it. To, totally. It's been constant. So I like to teach people not my opinion of what they should do, but to get them in touch with themselves and them higher selves onto what they should be doing, what their path is. Mm. Also to get people away from the ego, the jealousy, the comparing who's better and worse, because that does nothing except drain your energy. Okay, There's a chapter in the book about Klingons, I call them. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's what I do. So um, the other things I did, I trained as a funeral celebrant because I went to so many funerals with some priests, who they don't know, droning on about somebody they never met, you know, and praying to God that this person never went to church and probably didn't believe in God anyway, that I went to my cousin died, unfortunately, and I did the eulogy for his funeral. And over the last 10 years, um, every time there's a family funeral, I come from a big family, so we get quite a few. Nina, can you get up and do the reading? Nina, can you do this? So I did the eulogy for my cousin's funeral. And the funeral celebrant went, you should be doing this. Oh, wow. So within a year, I trained. I was about to get launched with it, and the pandemic hit. Of course. <laughs> of course. But also, the other thing I've learned is another one. I've developed um, a healing process called Release and Rescue, because I'm very much about you have to take control of your life to make your choices, to make your changes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this therapy I've developed, now, this is where it gets a bit, I do believe in, if you like, quantum physics, where there's time-space continuums. So though we're living here in the now, our energy can be left somewhere else traumatic. We've got past lives, we've got future lives, we've got uh, parallel universes, all this stuff. So with the healing that I developed, it's part of the Louise L. Hay bit where you release the anger and the pain and the frustration. But then I found I'm doing that, you never rescued yourself. So I do this other part of it where you go and rescue yourself from past situations. So in other words, you don't leave yourself in that energy. You take yourself out and reabsorb it into you. Now, I only do that with this life. I've got a friend who does it with past lives. And I've met somebody who was attempting to do with future lives. Hmm. But it, that is possible. Anything's possible. That's so interesting. I developed develop that as well. But the future lives one is interesting because it's saying how much can you influence your future? Because you've got the fate versus choice dilemma. Yeah. <clears throat> and my latest area of work that's only come in the last weeks is the alien other dimensional energies have started to come in and work with me as well. No. So that's I really interesting. A lot. <laughs> so only just started. I've always believed there's been other lives, other planets, because I think you've got to be pretty vain if you think we're it. It's pretty sad if you think we're it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, when uh, my wife and I got married and we went on our honeymoon, we went all the way to Ohio and uh, they have the Ohio State Reformatory, but we were there doing investigation with the the group from uh, Ghost Hunters, yeah. and also Amy Allen from the Dead Files was there, and she got up and did a little Q and A. She talked about how one, it was going to be revealed that there are UFOs, in which our government did do that, and I still don't know why people aren't more interested in that and the rest of the junk going on i have a theory on that <laughs> but um she said that we were gonna start having all these experiences and then everything was gonna happen more frequently well i do believe they're all i do believe there are what I hate the word alien other terrestrial energies that are in human form 
here now. Yeah. Because you have the rainbow children, the crystal children, um, the indigo children. All those to me are other element energies. So not okay. from this dimension. Is the are the black eyed children part of that too? <sighs> I've never even thought about that. There could be. Because I was on another chat with somebody the other day and they were talking about Bigfoot and uh, not Miss Munster. And the theory that I think is obviously that they're actually spirits. Huh. So that's why they can't find too much proof of them. Yeah, the I'm, spirit. I'm finding out a whole lot of stuff about Bigfoot. And for some reason, well, that's coming up a lot lately. Well, my guides just popped in now, said about the black eyed children, is that they are another elemental energy. Okay, not, not, not extraterrestrial, but elemental. Right, yeah, elemental, earth energy. They're from right. earth energy. Um, okay, thank you. They're also saying people will only be made aware and see them when they're ready. When you, it's that thing, when you're ready, the teacher appears. Okay. My God just popped in and popped out, then he does that every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, let me okay. ask you another quick question before I forget, because you, you know, I know you talked about how uh, uh, witchcraft was against the law there. Uh, haven't they were, was against and, the law. It was, seen, it was under the witchcraft act back in the 1940s. But like mediumship and witchcraft and all those, aren't those recognized as religions now over there? Um, the pagan religions, Wicca, I can't remember the other two, Druid, Druidism, mm. and there's another one that I can't remember. They are recognised religions now. But so is Satanism as a recognised religion, but why would you want to do that? God knows. Don't ask you're, me. You're, you're going to come out worse on that one. <laughs> but spiritualism is a recognised religion in the, well, it's a recognised religion around the world now. Mm -hmm. But you still have, because of the conventional churches, especially the Christian side, um, because all of those beliefs are about um, men and women being equal. They're about personal responsibility. Um, it's about you being in charge of your own destiny to a degree. And the karmic side comes in with all those as well. But for some reason, I don't know why, the conventional churches find that a hell of a threat. They did do back in the Middle Ages when the witch hunting was going on. Next, all of which is, is a wise woman. That's all. She's just a wise woman. She's intuitive. Um, she can use, well, some use herbs, we use crystals, we use all sorts to help people. You know, some people like to harm people, but you're damaging your own karma if you do that. So Right. That's a, a big no-no. <laughs> um, well, if you want to be hitting them, you know, hit, walk into a brick wall every five minutes, go and harm other people. It will happen. Um, I'd rather not. Um, the other thing that I think's changed is, have you noticed, I you get it in the States, where there's the extreme, it's like the ultra right wing, you know, the anti-abortion laws that are just coming over there. Yeah. Well, actually, it's there hasn't been any change to the anti-abortion laws themselves. It's the states have been given the, uh, they, they've they been able to come up with their own laws yeah. and there's not but, like but, a federal but, thing going on. But I'm comparing it, might be far stretched to some people. Back in the dark ages when they used to burn witches and drown them and all the rest of it, it was all women. Yeah. Disempowering women. The abortion things are there is disempowering women. It's not giving women a choice. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather Whatever stay away from that women, subject. Yeah, you can make that better. But it's about choice and personal choice. Nobody can make a choice for you. You have to make a choice because you've got to live with the karma of that choice. No one else. Whatever the choice is, it's your karma. Whether mm -hmm. you agree with it or not, your karma. So that was one thing. What else I was going to say? Something else about the witchy poo stuff. Go on. <laughs> you got you. Right, let's get back on to all right that's the guy to come back in right the alien energies come back to that. um they're already here we know they're already here but i think the reason people don't want to open up and don't want to see it and don't want to listen to it 
is because they've been distracted by the powers that be. They're on the phone, they're watching some soap opera, they're being fed by this negative news energy we get, the rubbish put in our food, all that. Um, it's not my area of work, but I see it. I'm thinking, yeah, that's obvious. And also people live in fear. So you think of all the films about aliens, they've always come and attacked us, right? Right. Apart from E.T. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they want to come and attack us? The ones I've had communication from, they're more curious. I think they're more curious how daft we are, to be honest. <laughs> but they're curious about us. Yeah, and they actually want to help us. Yeah. You know, um, we... you know, not to get off of the subject, but um, to talk about, uh, you know what, never mind. I'm not going to get into it. I'm going to cut that part out. I was going to say something else, but forget it. No, say what you like, could start anyway. <laughs> well, it is. It's, it's evolution of spiritual energy. Mm -hmm. That's why I look at it. But, right, I'm going to come back to the mediumship side of stuff now, because that's what we're here to talk about. Just going to grab, because I, though I do direct mediumship, I like to use my tools, which are my tarot cards. Okay. Okay. Now, people go these special powers. No, they're not. The bits of cards your pictures on. Okay. <laughs> um, this pack's probably about 10 years old. I seem to get a new pack every 10 years just to get worn out. So, Kyle, I'm just going to pick some for you if that's okay. That's perfectly fine. And we'll just see what we get for you. Because when I start doing this, spirit tend to pop in. Right, okay. Oops, that one's come out for you as well. A uh, quick question for you. Now, I know a lot of people have certain uh like ticks or whatever whenever they're in contact with spirit a uh, friend of ours she uh, actually belches whenever she's in contact with spirit uh, i i i don't really practice but um I, apparently i have the auditory ability i can hear them and Fair i'll audience. i'll start having uh, almost like when you get in a plane and you fly real high and your ears pop and you hear that little popping yeah, in your ear awesome. that's that's what i get so uh, do, you, do you have one not really because i've been doing it nearly 40 years they're just there mm -hmm. when i was younger i'd get really hot or really cold um if i get i do get people's aches and pains so if they were really, really hurt, and if they get arthritis, my hands go in funny shape, my back goes, my leg goes. It's great for when I'm standing up doing it. You're just with a bad leg, <laughs> hopping around. <laughs> if you had stomach problems or head problems, I feel or sense the person's thing. I'm trying to think. For me, I'll just take a deep breath in. And as I breathe in, I push the energy out to connect with the spirit world and the spirit world to come in. And I've just noticed I've got someone stood behind me here from spirit. Just saw the energy shift. Okay, right. Can you understand with somebody who would have passed with something with the head? I don't. It's a head injury or inside the head, so like a stroke or aneurysm. Um, I I do know someone that passed right. with the. Is that that being a male? Head. Yes. Male. Right. Can you understand as well? They would have had trouble with their eyesight. I don't think necessarily it was because of whatever happened. I don't know. But they're making me see out of one eye. You can't take it physically or take it symbolically. Can hmm. you remember when you used to live life looking out of one eye? Um, now she didn't see the full picture. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Right. Can you also understand where when you've been asleep at night, you've actually gone, had visits and vivid dreams of, I want to say at least three people in spirit. Yeah, I have. Really vivid. Like you wake up and go, oh, I must tell them. Oh, they're in spirit. That's when you've actually traveled and gone to visit them. That's quite normal. I'll so wake up crying. To, yeah. Things like, those things to me are perfectly normal, where to other people they're amazing. I'm like, that's normal. That should happen. That's how they stay with us. Okay, where are we going on? Okay. Right. If you also understand somebody who would have passed with breathing, lung, heart problems. Um, I do know uh, somebody that died with a heart problem. Can you understand this being a lady? Uh, 
If it's no, say it's, no if it's not the best. I don't, I can't recall. I mean, there okay. may be, but I can't I want to go to the grandmother, head. mother's side of the family, okay? Or the great grandmother, great grandmother. I feel she was quite a large lady, not huge, but quite large. And or could be mother in law's side of the family as well. Okay. She's making me aware of like an asthmatic type condition. Hmm. Okay. Um, and she would have struggled. I feel that she got big because she was on steroids because of the lung problems. Hmm. Might have to do some digging. Do some digging on this one. Mm -hmm. Right. Can you understand the name June or Julie J? It's a J name. June, Julie. It's a lady's name. Um, I mean, I have some ladies on the in the family with J name. Right. Well, she's saying she would have passed when you were four or five. She's telling me you were quite young when she passed, and I don't feel it's direct family. I feel it's like an in-laws or second cousin. You know what I mean? I want to go out and back a bit. Out and back a bit. So I describe it. Okay. But we don't want to be recorded. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird that all that happened. Yeah. <laughs> right She's then. Saying, she was she was a bit of a recluse. She didn't shut herself away a bit. Okay. okay. You'll find out. Right, where we're we going. Right, person with a headache, step forward again. Right. With this person, I feel that, well, they're taller than me, and I'm about five foot four, five foot six in English words. He's taller than me. He's getting on for six foot, this gentleman I've got with me. Um, quite slim in build. He's also making, why does he want to get the neck? He's, he's like, he wants to. Do you have problems with your neck? You get a bit stiff and a bit achy. I, I do, yes. Yeah, because he's like, he wants to give you a bit of a head massage and get your neck unlocked. That's what he wants <laughs> to say. Right. Do you also understand stand where he says you spend far too much time staring at the screen? I do. Right. He's, he's <laughs> saying you do. Okay. But right, he's laughing here. Do you understand where you're watching something like just happened then it went off, where you're watching something interesting and it just freezes or crashes? Yes. Because this is this um, gentleman playing about. He's having a right laugh with you. Okay. okay. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> Can you understand the name James or Jay, a Jane, male name, James? Uh, yes. James. James. Okay, right. Now, they're also giving me Norton. And I don't mean the motorbike, a place. Norton. I've no idea why they're giving me that. Let's name the place, the road, surname, and shop, Norton. Can't think of Norton. Now, hold on to it. It'll come back. Right. Now, you know you've got to write a book. I do. Yes, you're going to be writing a book about all your experiences and putting them together. I mean, it could be a, what's it, e-book rather than a physical book, but it's about you putting your experiences together. Right, your first card you got, Ace of Wands. Okay. Now, that to me is really, really good fortune coming your way if it's not already come. This first card is usually the past. Um. Can you understand where your life has taken off in directions you never would have dreamt of? Yes, I do. <laughs> it's like, I can't believe I'm doing what I'm doing with my life. Mm -hmm. Not just this. I also want to say, okay, thanks for it. Some of the things you've seen and witnessed that you don't talk about of the spirit realms. Okay. Because even now you think some things won't be believed. <laughs> yeah. But the will. Okay. A golden rule from spirit you're not here to prove anything to anyone yeah you're here to give them an experience and they can make it what they will keep that in mind because i do feel that's got to turn that over I've got the king of cups okay can you understand where you've got some haters around you someone yes, trying to put you down someone trying to close you down trying to enforce their opinion and views on you okay you've got to stand firm where you are you've got the back of the universe they haven't you're speaking your truth you're letting other people speak their truth you're not harming anybody so 
they've not got a leg to stand in, it's just their perception. Okay. Ah, oh, that's nice. You might not want that off camera. It's the lovers. So your relationships going from strength to strength. Okay. But can you understand why you need to spend some quality time with your wife? Yeah. You need to you need to shut everything down and take her away for a romantic weekend somewhere and just spend some time reconnecting. Okay, it's not that you're disconnected, it's just you need to reconnect. Right. I'm laughing here. Right, Queen of Wands. Okay. okay. Now, with that one, I'd normally say it's a young lady who's causing trouble, but I feel there's a young man who's um, 15, 16, that sort of age group, is needing to study and learn, but he's getting distracted. Mm. Okay. Um, if not directly with you, look at friends, children, relations, children. But he's getting distracted because he's got an interest in spiritual stuff. And he can totally see the futility of some of the subjects he's studying don't seem to have any purpose in his future. Hmm. Okay? okay. Where he comes in, he's coming, if he's not here, he's coming in. Okay. Basically, when it happens, you just need to sit down and say, well, you need to do your studying anyway. And once you've got a qualification under your belt, then you can play about. Okay, wherever he is. Oh, tell her like, okay, come on, sweetheart. Can you understand the young man in spirit who was like that? I I honestly can't think of anyone. Okay. Right, let's see where we're going with this then. Right, okay, then. It's somebody who's coming in. Someone you're going to meet. Okay. It's going to be really interesting, spiritual, like the 15, 16, 17, that sort of age. And you know, they want to grow up so fast. Let's not get this young man. It's like you'd be giving somebody, it's just one of the things to have a conversation and give me somebody a bit of guidance. Okay? okay. But that young man is really intuitive and he knows he's stuck with spirit, as a lot of the youngsters do. Right. The next three years, you can like them. Okay. There's a lot, of, I can't see it in there, but he's actually stood on a shoreline. And there's the sea, you can't see it from that picture. It can there. It's I can about see it. A lot of travel for you. Oh, okay. Nice. Three continents. Not three countries, three continents. Oh, wow. It's like you're going to be traveling around. Obviously, you'd be coming to England at some point. But there's a lot of stuff in New Zealand, Australia. Mm. Okay. And their native energies and native cultures. Okay, because there's a lot of energies there. And I just feel the next three years, whether you're actually physically going to go or whether you're just going to be meeting people from the different energies and different cultures is anyone's guess which one you're going to do. Right. I know this is a very, very, very mundane one, but you need your eyes tested. And I just got that done not too long ago. Good. But the, the glasses that I got are, I, I just can't seem to adjust. They're not to right. They've got the prescription wrong. Sorry, that was just the said. They've got the prescription wrong. Right. I'm just taking you another four. Let me see where we are. Oops, five. Okay. Do you understand why five is a really significant number in your life? Well, that's uh, always been one of my favorite numbers. So uh, I'm just getting it's a reoccurring number in your life because it's telling me to get five. Right. Coming up, I call that the travel car, the chariot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two things with that. Make sure your vehicles are working 100%. Trust okay. your instinct. You know, you sit in the car and if you don't feel right, trust the instinct. Okay. But also with that, I'm getting you doing a lot of traveling about, lots of different places, you're getting out and about more. You're going to be making money. Nice. Your finances are going to be good. However, you are all your life going to be searching, okay? But that's not because you're dissatisfied. It's because you've got a very inquisitive mind, yeah? And you're always like, yeah, I like that subject. I want to go further there, okay? But other subjects, you're like, no, nah, that don't do it for me. It's not where you're supposed to go. But that inquisitive mind, um, oh, that's interesting. Have you been asked to have a show on normal TV? Uh, actually, yes. <laughs> right, well, go for it. What are you waiting for? Go and do it. Well, um, 
I'll say this. I did a, uh, I did a pilot episode for a show a few years back and we did the filming. They, after all the editing and stuff was done, they uh, decided they didn't want to do That's it. That's because the timing wasn't right. You think what the energies in the world were like four, five, three, four years ago. We're in a different world now. Our energies are all changed. Yeah. You were ahead of the pack. Right. So you're definitely not a follower in anybody's imagination. <laughs> you want to go, you'll go your way. Okay. It's there's something like that coming around again. Okay. Cool. Maybe you'll end up getting together with some people and doing it yourself. All right. Thanks, Bert. Right. Making a show yourself like this, but with out and about and selling it to a TV company rather than them doing it the other way around. I think hmm. I don't know, that's the first thing about TV. Okay, then I've right. actually dreamed about having a talk show, so go for it. Hey, you're starting, aren't you? <laughs> Start a few years, right. and, and, and I'm going to be in a film next year, so. Right. There's loads of opportunities open up for you. Right. I've got this spirit coming in really, really close now. As they're coming close, they're making me feel really nauseous and sick, but it's all with my head, not my body. It's that I feel I can't you back off a bit. I feel like I want to throw up. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and then I suppose that's it. Back up a little bit. Okay. Right. Can you understand why he wants to put a cup of coffee in front of you and a muffin? Hmm. Well, I know the coffee, but I'm not sure about the muffin. muffin. Or is it a pancake? I don't know. I'll call it a muffin. Um, pancake. It's something round that you put syrup on. Something like that. I don't know. It's not something I'd eat. Pancakes, but uh, right. I don't understand the pancake part. Right. Okay. What's, what's that then? Can you understand where you need to eat better or eat more regularly than you are doing? um well I'm, i have kind of gotten off track a little bit lately because right, it's just it's going well, come on eat up eat up because he says you've been picking and getting distracted and not doing <laughs> okay he's saying that you need to, oh christ I like that he's literally got them pull the socks up because you need to pull your socks up <laughs> okay <laughs> right. oh did you used to go hiking because he's uh, just put these, or he used to go hiking, because he's put these big walking boots on, you know, like good solid boots. I call them builder's boots. But he's on about, hmm. not mountain, he just. I used to go hiking, but. Right. Okay. I mean, not seriously, but, uh, you know. But he's getting these boots on. You know, they're like hard, solid, but the same, the same sort you work wear on a construction site. Oh, well, that makes more sense. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because they're like steel toe cap, solid boots. He's putting them on you. Okay. Right. Ah, here's an interesting one. He's talking about you seeing somebody passing and seeing their spirit leave their body. Hmm. Hmm. That I have or I'm going to. I'm not sure. If you haven't, you go into. Because hmm. I'm seeing somebody falling and the spirit going. Because something I say this to everybody. If if somebody passes in traumatic situations, their spirit leaves their body before the trauma hits. So they do not suffer. Okay. Hmm. I've been through many, many, many people's passings where they show me. And you think when anybody describes a trauma to you, they don't describe it from here, looking at it. They describe it as though they were watching it. Because your body's got a safety valve, a natural spiritual safety valve that takes you out of the equation. So you watch it, you don't experience it, even though you do. A bit more quantum physics-y things. Okay, then. Right. It's your step back. So, okay, what anything else, love? Do you understand what? Okay. I know you say you do the paranormal stuff, but you can understand somewhere where you want to go and investigate. There's a site you really want to get to. Oh, yeah. There's one that I want to get to really bad. Right. Okay. Is it in New York by any chance? I uh, know. 
Who's been, okay, thank you. Who's been wanting to go to New York oh. and do it and they shouldn't? Who? Wait and see where that Not comes sure. in if you don't know yet. Somebody wants, somebody's talking about going, going to the Twin Towers and they really shouldn't. They should not go anywhere near them because the energy there needs healing still hmm. needs healing so if anybody's going to do it okay not you someone who's an amateur someone who's playing about with it and not taking it seriously well you Wait, know what i think if there was know. someone that talked to me not too long ago about that don't want to go there do not I go don't. Not you, whoever this person, well, not you two either, but can you understand why this person doesn't respect spirit? I think it's a, probably just think it's a game. Well, they're in for a nasty wake up call because it isn't a game. It's what more serious than So, sorry, I'm laughing because my, my guy just said, well, What do you do, Nina, when you're yes, supposed playing? I ask spirit to enlighten them. <laughs> They'll find out their own way. So, okay, right. You need to, Joe, you know that express a British expression, if you know it. Never a borrower nor a lender be. Yes, I've heard that expression. Right. Well, stick to it because I've got somebody who thinks they're going to come with a handout to you and don't. Okay. But mainly for you, you've got to be a little very, very patient. Okay. That's something I'm working on. <laughs> because. Where your path is leading and the work you're here to do. Okay. It's you're like at the station ready to go on the next journey, but the other trains haven't come in yet. So you can't because you're waiting for people to catch up. Okay. So you've got a bit of a delay on your journey right now. Anything else, Spirit? Okay. Who's the person who broke the nose? Besides me. <laughs> I just felt like some, my nose just went, oh, that hurt. Right, okay, what's that then? Okay. Also, this is a strange one. Who is it? I don't think actually drowned or they nearly drowned. Because I feel like I'm in water and I can't quite get out of it, but I don't feel I like passed in water though. Well, um, if it happened a while back, that would have been my wife. It can be any time. Go back years, these lot. That would have been my wife. Right. I said she didn't drown, but she came pretty close. It, I was gonna say it was a very, very close thing for her. Okay. Okay. Which one of you two winds the other up? So I'm getting somebody really winding the other one up. <laughs> well, we kind of do that to each other. Right. <laughs> because I'm getting a lot of laugh, I'm getting laughter with it. But you've got to be careful not to take it that step too far. Because I think she'd throw something at you if you did. <laughs> <laughs> a, a cushion missile. <laughs> oh, it's funny you say that. <laughs> well, we've got some kittens, and okay. one of them had uh, kicked the lamp over, and it hit me right on my head. I mean, left a nice little divot in my head, right? And so I, I've been telling everybody my wife has hit me in the head with a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, spirit joining in with that then. <laughs> Anything else, my darlings? I'm just seeing somebody here. Okay. Who's Joe or Joseph? Older uh, gentleman. He would have been in a military uniform. Okay. I want to go back with this. Oh, wow. That would have been... Um... Um, I, I want to say he was a cousin, is like a second or third cousin. Yeah, but can you understand he was in the military mm -hmm. and he's making me sit up straight? <laughs> Quite a solid built man as well. He wasn't a skinny bloke, he was solid built. Okay, well, this would have been somebody else. Uh, Not fat, but just muscular. That's what I want to get. That's what he's saying to me. You, saying the name Joe in my family, you'd have about 10 people sit up and okay. say, Okay, oh. all right then. <laughs> now, this one's quite big built, uniform, it's like a green, ducky, greeny, khaki colour. But what is reminding me of this is an old one. If you remember the film about Glenn Miller, the old one, 
with mm-hmm. um, James Stewart. Okay. He's surrounded with that sort of uniform with a cap on. Okay. Okay, captain or I don't I don't know the ranks, but he's like he's not a foot soldier. Put it that way. He's a bit more than that. Um, he's making me stand to attention for you. Okay. Who's going back to school? Who's thinking of going back to school to do some more learning? Um, wow. Um, there's actually, I actually want to say there's a few people in the family that do. Well, okay. It's talking about somebody is taking a totally different direction to anything they've done before. Now, I want to say my son has been talking about that. Right. Probably. He's been kind of back and forth about it. It's like he's going to go off in a totally different direction. But also, is it him who's the really caring, nurturing person? Yeah. In fact, he's a nurse. <laughs> I was going to say nursing. <laughs> but I feel he wants to probably go more into the psychology, counselling, therapist side and the physical nursing. That's the feeling I'm getting. It's like going in a different direction. Okay. Okay. I don't think it's where he's going to end up, but it's sort of like it's got to go on that bit to get where he needs to go. If that makes any sense, you know that he he's young, he's in his mid twenties, so uh, you know that his mind has changed a few times. Now, let's see if it gets to the counselling psychology side of things because I just feel there's something he's interested in. Okay, because I also feel with the nursing, he's too much of an empath. He takes too much on board. And it's damaging his aura, damaging his, his energy because he takes it on board too much. He needs to learn to filter that. Uh, anything else, Spirit? Stuart. Just said Stuart. I don't, it's first name or surname. And I don't know which way they're spelling it. Ask your son about Stuart. Okay. Don't know why. So there you go. Thank you, Spirit. You're going to step back now. So there you go. So there you go. That's me doing a little bit. I have this thing where I don't expect you, when I'm a read for, to know everything straight away. The amount of times people have phoned up a week later and go, you never guess what? And I don't even know who they are by then. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I told you before we start or a little while ago about my our friend that she belches whenever she, she has spirit come on. Well, anyway, um, she goes on investigations with us and so she can give us either advice or she can give advice to the the homeowner and she sat down and she was telling this lady you've got a a a, uh, aunt that is kind of disassociated from the family and you know had a kid and uh, i think the kid died or something just all this stuff the lady goes there's nobody in our family like that a few days later, she called me up and she said that her mother told her that she had a, a aunt that it was estranged from the family because she used to go running around and had a kid who passed away. Yeah. And I'm like, what the? So that made me a believer. <laughs> the thing I like about it, if you're interested in the medium and stuff, get your family tree done. Yeah. Okay. Because if you get your family tree, it makes a medium shop so much easier. Because they go, you've got so and so and so and so. Oh, yeah, I recognize that name in my family tree. I know what career they did. I could go so far back. So, but the other thing with it is the, um, I was having a chat with somebody about it yesterday about your spiritual DNA. You've got your genetic DNA, yeah, but then you've got your spiritual DNA, which doesn't always run, run alongside the family lines because yeah. it's what your soul's experienced and bringing back to the earth each time. And then you meet people. I come from the same soul group where you recognize that soul, you recognize that person and you're comfortable with them. You know, that's what I call the soul connection. That's a whole other subject. <laughs> See, in my, my family, they would be all against that kind of stuff. I was kind of the person who broke away and got more into this kind of thing. My wife's family, on the other hand, they've all got abilities and it's incredible. I still believe my mother has a, a, a healing ability because she would be able to just put her hands on me and all of a sudden my energy would change where I would be so calm and relaxed and it, it very re- rarely happens, but she has that ability 
but she wouldn't claim to it. Thing is, I think my family, I was lucky because my family, uh, no, did the family tree. We started off in England on my mum's side. They slept the way across Europe, Africa, and India, and ended up in Ceylon as was. <laughs> wow. Um, my dad's side were German Jewish, of all things. And they ended up in Ceylon as well, via Portugal and God knows where else. So I've got a very, very rich and vibrant ancestry. But because we've been multicultural family, because they because I'm not saying Sri Lanka, for me she's arguing, my family left Ceylon, not Sri Lanka. Okay. When mm -hmm. they were there, it was a British colony. Um, but you also had a lot of Buddhists in Ceylon. We also had this. Church of England, Catholic Church. Um, but because of the Eastern background of our family, we have got such a mixture of beliefs through the family. And then I've got my two aunts who were British, but um, though they were supposedly Church of England, they became spiritualists. So I was brought up with a very, very open-minded um, family belief system, which I found as I've developed, a lot of people are indoctrinated into a belief system that stops them growing because it's about control, domineering, keeping in your place. Yes, yeah, so when they break away and when somebody doesn't understand something, they automatically think it's bad and it's evil and it's horrible. It's not. We're all spirit. There's one, two guarantees in life, isn't there? You're born, you die. And if you live for more than 10 years, you'll pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Have That's you, the guarantee in life. Um, do you have a website? No, I don't. I am. You can find me on Nina Roberts Medium on Facebook. Nina Roberts Medium, Medium. on Facebook. Okay. On Facebook. Uh, you'll find me on there. Um, obviously, I'm based in England. But I could do readings from anywhere in the world because I have Zoom myself. Um, I don't charge much. In British money, a mini reading lasts about half an hour. It's £20. And a full reading, £35, takes as long as it takes. Whatever I do, if spirit want to come talk to you, they will. But I tend to use my tarot cards because past, present, possible future. Um, if you're in England, I'm running a workshop in September in Wales, but that's all on my page. If you're interested in my book, I'm actually having a bit of problems because the publishers I used have gone bust and I've got to get it all sorted. That's another subject. Oh, no. Um, it is for sale on Amazon, but not from me. But if anybody contacts me for my book, I put a personal message in it to them from Spirit. I've only got about 10 copies left. Really. <laughs> well, there's going to be some people out there that, that are going to be, they're discouraged right now and they need something to encourage them. So I'm sure someone's going to want to buy that book. Well, if they do, if they're meant to have, I'm one of these. If Spirit meant, if you're meant to have it, it, you'll have it. If it's meant to happen, it will happen. If it doesn't happen or it's not meant to, it's a really good reason. I'll go back to where I started. When my daughter's father ran off before our wedding, which was for our wedding, he ran off and left me, I was pregnant. It was the best thing he ever did. Because he ended up being a heroin addict. Oh, man. So the fact that he left was the best thing he ever did for me and my daughter. Never felt like it at the time. He's actually still alive, amazingly. <laughs> But wow. that's, I mean, the worst thing can happen for the best reason. If my dad and my fiance they hadn't died, I would not have probably got into spirit and worked with spirit the way I have. I've told the story a million times, but, you know, I have a disease in my spine that keeps, that it makes the bone deteriorate. Mm -hmm. So it's ruining not only the bone, but of course the discs in between, and it makes it difficult to, to walk. And I had to retire early. And if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be doing this right now. Exactly. So, so it even was a the blessing. worst things are actually a blessing. And um, my friend and I, if you can meet a Wendy, we've got this thing. It's a theory, and people heard it, that you actually choose your life. That before you're born, you choose your parents, you choose your siblings, you choose what experiences you're going to have. Okay. And as soon as you're born, you forget it all. <laughs> <laughs> my friend and I say we were at a party before we came to this life we were very drunk we were doing lots of silly things we shouldn't have done and we had no idea what we were agreeing to <laughs> my 
goodness. You know, you're going to have to come back to the show. Yeah, this anytime. was this was fun, really was. I'm I, I'm sorry, but we've run out of time. So yeah. just pick a subject with me, and I'll go for it. Well, well, de maybe. Definitely uh, want to do that. Uh, maybe we can bring some other folks on and um, have them talk to you. But uh, I've still got millions of questions to ask. We'll get to it uh, the next time. No problem, so, Kyle. Well, but, thank um, you for having me on here. Something oh, of course. It. Of course. And everything that people need to get in touch with you is all on Facebook. Yeah. I will put that link up in the description so people can click on it and go straight to it. Well, the email address. Okay. I can put your email up too. Yeah. Put my email up and contact me through that as well. Well, thank you again for your time. I want to thank everyone. If you are new to the channel, I appreciate you stopping by. If you would, please hit that subscribe button. If you are a regular, thank you for the support. Uh, Y'all encourage me a lot. And so until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. Bye-bye.